Hey coders out there, this is Stefan from Be a Python Dev. Uh, in this short guide, I'm here to teach you uh, Python quickly through practical applications, uh, little mini things that kind of actually have a point. Uh, most tutorials I've noticed out there kind of break things down like little section by section by section, and that can be a little tedious and you don't really understand like why you're doing the things you're doing. So in this, I'm gonna build four little small applications with you guys uh, that will actually have an objective to why we're building them. And in those, I kind of list out the specific focuses that we're t teaching in that uh, video. So I hope you guys like that. And I hope that's a little easier to follow than kind of going through small little sections. Uh, the reason I'm not doing that is because that's already been done a million times before. Uh, if you do want to go through some of those kind of tutorials as well, in addition to this, to reinforce your learning, uh, the links to those will be below in the description. Uh, so again, if some of this doesn't make sense or you just want to go into things more in depth, I definitely welcome you guys to visit those links down there. So our mission statement at Be a Python Dev is to improve the skills of developers around the world by sharing valuable knowledge in coding and software development. And our content is geared toward empowering you all and taking ownership over your careers through bias for action and deliberate practice. So what I mean by deliberate practice is when you actually sit down to code, you have a purpose in what you're doing. You stay focused on that purpose and you just go ahead and try to retain that focus for several hours at a time. Like if you're gonna learn guitar, it's not really good to just pick up a guitar and mess with it for a little bit and and not really have a goal in what you're doing uh, because that's going to take you a very long time to learn guitar. So it's the same thing with coding. Uh, if you have clear objectives and what you're trying to learn and you actually focus on those goals, you'll be able to learn coding, Python, uh, pretty much anything much quicker with that goal and through deliberate practice. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to our channel and share this on your social media to anyone that may find it useful. Um, it'll help us grow, it'll help us keep putting out content for all of you and all the future developers that will come across this. Uh, so please definitely do that and like the video if you've learned something today. Uh, and the sections of this tutorial that we're gonna be having is uh, installing Python. I already created one of those videos a long time ago. Um, I'll leave that link in the playlist. It'll go through that. Uh, it'll just help you walk through installing Python on your operating system. I think it's using an older version, 3.6. Uh, the current version right now is 3.8, uh, but I think I'm gonna be using 3.7. A lot of confusing numbers. They're all roughly the same and do the same things. Uh, if you're watching this years from now, it may be 4.275, but hopefully I'll update it by then. Uh, the next section will be a small little Hello World application that will teach input and output. Uh, go over strings and go over variables. Uh, the next program after that will be a guess the number program. Uh, we'll teach you how to use modules to do simple things like picking a random number, uh, reading an input through the user. Uh, because most of the time when you're making a program, the program is supposed to have some kind of objective for the person using it. And if you're not able to get feedback from them through input and output, then there's not really much point. Uh, the other things that that will cover is functions, conditional logic, and loops. Uh, next small program after that we'll be doing is a small address book. Uh, we'll be able to write someone's name, write their phone number, do some parsing of their phone numbers and names, and display that to the user, again, through input and output. Uh, we'll also use some data structures and classes and serialization and deserialization techniques to be able to persist data. And then the last program in this little mini-series, for now at least, is going to be a console-based calculator. Uh, some of the key topics we'll be going over that is a more advanced conditional logic, and then stacks to parse the string that we'll be inputting into it for the actual calculations. So again, thank you for finding this tutorial, and I hope you guys all find it useful. All right, let's get started.